Yeah, it's mine. <clears throat> Welcome back to the interview area. We are joined by world number five, Justin Thomas, and recent PGA Championship winner. Justin, um, you were here, I think, a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. What were your impressions of the course? Yeah, it's a great course. I, I came on Monday uh, last week, and um, it worked out well, very similar to the PGA, where I was able to go kind of on the way to the to the venue for that week and just wanted to come play because the, the practice rounds for the majors can be a little long you know have a lot of guys haven't seen this place before so feel the need to play 18 holes and and check it out and I, I just uh, I didn't really want to have a six-hour practice round so it worked out well to come check it out and um, it's it's just it's a cool place I mean it's it's very in front of you it's old school you got dog legs I mean I'm, I haven't been on the course since I was here Monday but I'm sure it's going to be long rough and and firm and fast greens. What do you um, look for when you're preparing for U.S. Open week specifically? I mean, you always know U.S. Open's a grind. I mean, that's why I love it. I think that's why a lot of guys love it. it it's a, you know, you're, it's one of the few times of the year you're kind of playing uh, more in relation to par, and, and par's a good score. Um, I mean, driving the ball is going to be very important this week, but I think like any any major, especially U.S. Open, I mean, scrambling and salvaging and making, you know, those those putts for par uh, can kind of be the momentum builders. Right here to Ben. Uh, Justin, uh, you were in here 2013, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have your old uh, note uh, book from that week, and how similar does it look compared to then? Yeah. Uh, I, I missed the cut, so I hope I don't have it. But um, I, I, I didn't play too bad here. I didn't play the other course very well. But it's it was one of the – I remember, like, some holes um and then once i got there i would remember it more it just was the specifics the little i, I did not remember this amount of undulation and slope on the greens um i love the addition of the short par three i think every golf course should have a short little hole like that and it's got a you know a diabolical green to where it's they can put some tough pins you can make two and four in a heartbeat and um yeah i mean it's I don't remember enough about it to feel like I came in here with a significant advantage. We're going to go to behind me to Christine. Hi, Justin. Christine Brennan uh, with USA Today. Uh, you alluded in a tweet yesterday to Rory with that 21 and mm -hmm. you had a little smiley face, whatever. Uh, curious if you would talk maybe about the situation in your sport right now. And would you ever consider going to live golf and if the answer is no, would it be because of your loyalty to the PGA Tour, or would it be because of going into business with someone like Mohammed bin Salman? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I obviously was very happy for Rory and him winning the tournament. Um, he's, I, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for him, not only as, as a golfer, but just as a person. I mean, I see how hard he works down in Florida. and. And it had been a little while since we've had that battle against each other on a Sunday. So, I mean, I definitely could have written the ending a little bit better if I could have come out on top. But uh, it just was a big week for the tour. I mean, I, I, I tossed and turned and lost a lot, a, lot, a lot of sleep last week thinking about what could potentially happen. And it's just, you know, I've, I grew up my entire life wanting to play the PGA Tour, wanting to, uh, you know, break records make history, play Presidents Cups, play Ryder Cups. And, you know, the fact that things like that could potentially, um, you know, get hurt because of, you know, some of the people that are leaving and, and if more go, um, it's just sad. I mean, it's really no other way to say it. It's just it, it just makes me sad, you know, because like I said, I've grown up my entire life wanting to do that and I don't want to do anything else. Um, you know, I mean, the, the people that have gone, it's, it's like I said, they have the decision that they're entitled to make it. Not necessarily that I agree with it one way or the other, but uh, everything's got a price, I guess. And just to follow up, thanks. Is uh, does Phil Mickelson making the decision that he made? Does that disappoint you? What do you what decision? Phil to, Mickelson to go to live golf. Uh, I mean, I, he was very adamant about it for a while. So I, I don't think that decision or, or Bryson really surprised any of us. I mean, they were talking it up not only uh, to a lot of their peers but other people so I think uh, you know Phil going was a uh, was not that surprising of a, a decision just based off of things that I was hearing internally from from him and others Dan you and Rory have, have sort of emerged as leaders in this whatever you want to call it the guys who are still deciding should I go should I stay are you making yourself available to them to talk to them, or is it sort of like everyone can make their own decision? 
I, I want it to be both. I mean, we're all, we are all grown-ups, and um, it's, I just, I go back and forth so much on, on different thoughts and how I feel about it, but it's just, I, I just, I know what I want to happen, but it's just at the end of the day, you don't know if it is going to happen, because like I've said from the beginning, it's, I mean, it's astronomical money that they're throwing at people, and, you know, that's, People, every, everybody has a price for everything. It doesn't matter if you don't want to do it. If you do want to do it, there's going to be some kind of number that's going to get people to think about it, and they're reaching that number with a lot of people. So I just want to be able to basically say my part or what I think about uh, the decision or, or the PGA Tour. And, I mean, selfishly, I don't want anybody to leave. You know, I mean, I've, I've talked to some of my peers that have asked me questions, and I don't know probably as much as others, but... I'm like, you got to do what's best for you or what you think is, is best um, for your career. I'm like, but selfishly, I don't want you to go. That's, that's how I kind of end any phrase or any, any conversation that I'm having with somebody about it because at the end of the day, I'm not their parent. I'm not you know, the person that's making their decisions. All I can do is plead my case. Uh, but everybody out here is a grown-up. They can make their own decisions. On your right, we're going to go Steve and then back to Ben. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? How many holes did you play today? I played zero holes today. Oh, okay. That sort of takes care of my question. He was here a week ago. <laughs> you were here a week ago? Yeah, I played Monday. Have you seen Monday. the beer prices yet? Just kidding. <laughs> um, a lot of big moments here have happened on the 17th hole. Can you describe the 17th hole and how you go about surviving it or getting through it? Yeah, it's a unique hole. It's, it's um, unlike, I think... A lot of holes out here are pretty self-explanatory off the tee. You know, it's maybe just, am I going to hit a driver? Am I going to hit a three-wood or whatever it is? But I think that hole presents a lot of opportunity of different clubs off the tees. And if you want to, I mean, especially with how a lot of guys are playing nowadays, I mean, a lot of guys, or not a handful of guys are probably going to hit driver, try to hit it right in front of the green. Or if you get a helping wind, maybe the tee's up, you can knock it on the green. Um, but then again, I'm sure the rough's going to be nasty up there to where you get out of position, it's tough. And then it's like, do you lay up and do you lay up to a good number? It's just, it, so I can see it's, it's a hole that if you're, you can have a two shot swing on it pretty quickly for it being a very short, easy hole. Um, but it's really just going to kind of be how you want to attack it or approach it. I think once you get to that point, especially come Saturday and Sunday. Uh, front right to Ben. Hey, Justin, with, uh, with Rory, it seems he's really taken a leadership role being pro PGA Tour. Are you surprised that he's taken that mantle? And is he someone that a lot of the guys on tour you think really look up to? I mean, I'd hope so, just for the, the sake of, I mean, I know he's accomplished a lot more than I have. He's, he's been out here longer. He's been more successful. Um, but there's nobody that has, I think, acts better for acts more humble and more grounded for what they've done and who they are than him. I mean, I, I remember being a rookie and, and moving down to Jupiter and he was out of Bears Club and I just, being the person I am wanting to learn, going up to him and I just was like, hey, I'd, I'd love to play sometime, you know, introduce myself. And, and he was like, yeah, anytime. And, you know, gave me his number and we, we kind of hit it off. I mean, we're very similar personalities. So for me, I, I definitely think that other people should should look up to someone like him. I mean, I do in some aspects. I mean, there's definitely other parts that, um, you know, he's still a, a competitor and someone that I'm trying to beat. Mm -hmm. But there's still a lot of things that, as a leader that he does really well. And I think that um, he's very he's very honest, you know, like I am. I'm not going to sit in here and, and feed a you know, a PC answer or, or just say something to maybe please a certain crowd. If, if you feel a certain way, you know, you feel like you should say that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what he does. And he does it for the, for the best reasons and hopes that it's, um, that it's going to be the best for the PGA Tour. We're going to go to Dave on your left. Yeah, Justin, how much with all the things that you're, this press conference, the one that Phil Mickelson was in obviously earlier, is all talking about live series. We're not a lot of them talking about the U.S. Open. Um, yeah. How much of this ends up becoming this distraction, the, like the fact that you have to answer questions. It is. Everyone's going to. How and much is that going to play into the way that you play and maybe the way that other people actually play the tournament? Well, I hope it wouldn't change anything with how I play. Uh, I mean, it's not, like I said, when I kind of have off time and I'm sitting there and able to think about some stuff, obviously, I mean, you can't go anywhere. I'm sure it's the same with you all. You can't go anywhere without people, somebody bringing it up. But, but that's just kind of one of the things I spoke to earlier. It's just like, it's sad. Like this is the U.S. Open and 
And this is an unbelievable venue, a place with so much history, an unbelievable field, so many storylines, and yet that seems to be what all the questions are about. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate. That's not right to the USGA. That's not right for the US Open. That's not right for us players. Um, but that's unfortunately where we're at right now. To Dylan right behind me. Yeah, did you get a chance to see Jay's comments? <clears throat> You're obviously playing when he went on the CBS broadcast, but no, I don't know I if didn't. you. Okay, then never mind on that Sorry. front. Where did your Boston sports fandom come from? Uh, well, it's it's more like I just I like the Red Sox. So at, my uncle is from up this area, and um, and he was a big Red Sox fan, and it just was kind of something. It was no birthday or Christmas gift that was. Uh, that was for me from him was anything but Red Sox. So, you know, it was like I had a lot of jersey T-shirts, a lot of hats, a lot of blankets. and Which he, players, you know? Yeah, I had a Nomar, uh, had a uh, Manny, and then I think I had a, and then my first actual Red Sox jersey was a David Ortiz jersey. Um, I think I even had like a, I had a Veritech one. Um, yeah, I mean, I just he took me to a Yankees Red Sox game at Fenway for my birthday one year, which was really cool. I was probably like 12. Went to a Yankees Red Sox game at at Yan old Yankee Stadium. I mean, I remember because I had my Nomar jersey on, and I was you know getting yelled at and cussed at and given the finger, and I was like nine years old. So that was my first <laughs> introduction to the Yankees Red Sox rivalry. Is Ortiz still in your email address? It is. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stay on this side. We're going to Luke and then Brentley. Hey, JT. Um, I do have a U.S. Open question. Uh, when you're like midway through a really difficult U.S. Open round, uh, is there anything you do or say to yourself that, you know, you kind of reset, you know, start from the beginning, refocus, and just to kind of get you through the rest of a difficult round? Um, I wish I could say something because it, it never seems like it's that easy. It, it, and a lot of it is kind of depending on how you're playing. You know what I mean? It's... If you're, if you're cruising and, and everything feels good, you just basically keep doing what you're doing or, or just really try to stay focused and in the moment and present. But it's when things start going south or, or maybe you get a couple of bad breaks or you get some wind gusts, whatever it is, to where you just get thrown some adversity and it's like, how are you gonna handle it? And those are the times, especially in a, in a major, that I've learned that you know I've become a little impatient. I almost try to force the issue sometimes. And at the end of the day, at the, or at the end of the week in a major, I mean, that's how a lot of guys are going to end up losing the tournament. And I'm trying to get to a point where I don't do that anymore. I wish it was, you know, that easy to just be able to say, I'm going to stay perfectly in the in the present and in the moment, and I'm not going to let anything affect me. But uh, that's not that easy. So you just kind of have to make make way with whatever you have. Really? Uh, is there one kind of past USGA championship that you played that kind of eats at you the most? It doesn't have to be a US Open. It could be an AM or a junior. Or... Uh, and what like eats at like, me the most that like, I, I wish. Like one that you felt like really got away from you that you could have had a shot at. The, the USAM at Chambers, or I'm sorry, at um, the USAM at Cherry Hills. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I was one match away from Augusta in the US Open. I uh, played Michael Weaver. He was five under through 10 on me uh, at a very hard golf course. And that that was a bummer because you only obviously have such a very short amount of time in your career to play in events as an amateur. Um, I mean, not that I think that that affected my career in any way, but it still would have been pretty cool to play in the Masters as an amateur. So I got to thank Michael Weaver for that one for beating me. We're going to take one from the WebEx with everything going on with the PGA Tour and, and Live Golf right now. What would be your message to young golfers who are dreaming of playing on the tour in the future? You know, I think it's – my dad said it best. And, you know, we just was talking to him about, you know, not only the, everything going on with golf but just going on in the world. And it's just like – I mean, my dad is someone, you know, very old school. It's just he loved to work. You know, he, he'd work – 80 hours, you know, a week as a club pro, and he would, you know, he'd pull his own cart, he'd pull the carts down in the morning, he'd, he'd close the shop up in the afternoon, and he'd be the first to say, he's like, I made no money, but I just love to work. And it, there's no, you have to love what you're doing, is basically what I'm saying. There's no amount of money that you could get that if you don't love or enjoy what you're actually doing, the amount of money you have doesn't, you're still gonna be miserable, you're still not gonna enjoy it. And although you might be, you know, miserable in a bigger house or a nicer car, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that your life is going to be 
any better. So I think it's what's very important for juniors and everybody growing up is just you got to be passionate about it and play for the right reasons and, and just want to want to get better and, and strive for that and uh, keep working at it. We're going to go two in a row behind me. Hey, Justin, um, I'm just curious if, you know, there is this further fracturing of the sport, um, the way the way things are going, what do you think that'll do for the majors or what? What do you, how do you think it will affect or, you know, change the way majors are? I don't know. I, the, the decisions that the majors make are, are, you know, not in my control at all, so I'm not sure how they're going to handle that. Um, I, I mean, my, my, I just, I just want to play against the best of the world, and I want a chance to try to win majors. And with that being said, I mean, the, need, the best players in the world need to be here, but at the same time, I don't necessarily want guys to be able to do both. So it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough spot to be in. But um, like I said, the majors are the ones that – have to make those decisions, and uh, I just pretty much got to deal with it, I guess. <laughs> Dylan, last question. Yeah, you got a lot of uh, traction, I guess, when you talked last week about kind of separating the, the person from the decision of, you know, maybe someone going to yeah. live. Uh, why do you think that struck such a chord with people? Because I think it's just, it's honest. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I, I try I've tried to get better, but I just truly think it's just the day and age of, of, I mean, social media has just gotten that way to where it's like, it's so negative anymore. And I mean, I, like I said, I'm the first to admit that there's times where people do something and, and I bash them, at, obviously not externally, maybe internally with friends or whatever it is. And it's like, it just, it's not necessary. Like it's not, you can disagree with the decision. You can maybe wish that they did something differently. You can maybe and, and another thing is is being in the media as a writer you have to write about it like I understand that but you know for people at home to necessarily say that Dustin Johnson is now a bad person that's that's not fair that's just not it's not right now again I said it last week I'll say it again do I wish he wouldn't have done it and like am I a little sad about it yeah but I mean it is what it is like it's you just got to move on and make the best out of what you got and and um you know, I guess just worry about yourself a little bit sometimes. Justin, thanks for your time and good luck this thanks. week.